Good day dear chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you the 13th game of 1978 Tal vs Kasparov friendly blitz match. Up to this point after 12 rounds we have an equality both players have 6 points. We are good to go with the 13th game where Tal at white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Kasparov answered with c6. The super solid Karokan defense is on the board and after d takes e4, knight takes e4, we see bishop f5. The classical variation is on the board, something which requires a huge theoretical knowledge and with your home preparation you can go too far. h5, bishop h7, after which white is offering the exchange of light squared bishop of standard stuff of course. Queen c7. In here the main moves are e6 or knight gf6, but in the game we see queen c7 with which black is preparing castling queenside. White castled queenside, e6 knight e4 and black also castled queenside, g3. Uh, as Nikitin writes, this is a popular position and it was Vladimir Makagonov and Vladimir Pagirov who taught Kasparov the nuances of this position. Uh, knight c5, an alternative is going for an exchange on e4. In the game we see knight c5 relying on the pinned d-pawn. Bishop takes c4, uh, c5, bishop f4 and black covered the queen after which an exchange followed. All in all we have an equality on the board, nothing special and now by relying on this pin, black will try to put a pressure down the d-file. Right now black is already threatening to win this guy, right? That's why we see f4, c takes d4, c takes d4, king b8. Black is moving away the king from uh, the open c-file where it exposed to very nasty threats. Queen e7, rook c4, meanwhile white is strengthening the pawn on d4, rook c1, knight takes e5, f takes e5, and a6. Black is opening up a loop for the king and already is threatening to win the pawn on e5, right? Something which you can't do at this point because in the end of the day there is a back rank weakness, you can get checkmated, that's why Kasparov played a6, queen c3, Rook 5 d7 a4, King a7 a5. White is first cementing black's queenside pawn structure and then will try to create problems. Uh, queen f3, queen b6 check, king b8, rook c3. Tal is trying to switch his second rook into the attack from the third rank, queen b5, and yeah, uh, Kasparov decided to get rid of. Tal's queen because when Tal has a queen on the board that can be catastrophic for his opponents. Rook c7 and queen takes b6. Kasparov is hurrying with proceeding with his idea and the exchange actually gives white advantage. Better was playing queen d5 because already at this point rook b7 can be a threat, right? Although not a lethal threat but playing solidly and making queen d5 move is better. After which the following variation can arise. Uh, but instead after rook c7 we see queen takes b6 and the problem with this move is that after a takes b6 white is managing to restrict the movement of black king and this wedge on b6 is actually creating too many problems for black. Of course you can't capture on c7 because of this deadly fork. Uh, in the game we see f6 and e takes f6. This is the first chance which Tal is missing uh, and instead he could beat his opponent by choosing other continuations. Let's first uh, finish up the game, still a few more moves to go and then we will cover the sidelines. Instead Tal played e takes f6, g takes f6, king a3, e5. Another mistake which is allowing white to win but Tal again for the second time missed his chance, played d takes e5 and soon after rook 7 c5 the players agreed to draw at this point we have a total equality. But now let's go back and start uh, analyzing from this point on. 
So tall plate e takes f6, but the winning moves are king a3 or g4. g4 is better, you are not even allowing your opponent to go for f5. And after g4, black is actually finding himself in Tsuk Tsavang, you know. If f takes e5, then d takes e5. And how are you going and what are you going to play? If check, then just king a3. And if here, then rook c4 awaiting move. And black is losing. No way out. Uh, instead, tall plate e takes f6. Yeah, this is blitz and everything can happen. Uh, both players can miss important lines. D takes e5. Tal is missing the second winning chance. And at this point it was better to go for an exchange, sorry, on d7. And then play rook f3. If here, then just rook takes f6. And now there is a mating threat. You can't push forward your d pawn. If here, then king b2. White king will now stop this pawn. And then the rook will do its job. This is winning. Instead, I'll play d takes e5, which leads to a draw. So after 13 games, again we have an equality. Both players have six and a half points, and pity that again, Mikhail Tal missed his chance to beat the young, talented Gary Kasparov. We have one more round to go. As you know, this match consists of 14 games, and will try to cover that game in the upcoming days. In the end, the chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. There is even a forced mate in four and as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.